All right, today I'm going to be talking with Karen Peterson, who's here on Skype with us, and she has a really cool, inspiring story to tell you about the website that she began and what it has accomplished in her life and with her family uh, because of it. So, Karen, welcome to the show. Yes, thanks so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, tell us what your website is. My website is called 365daysofcrockpot.com, and it is all slow cooker and pressure cooker recipes. And yeah. so how old is the site at this point? In January, we're probably 10 years old. So it's so it's a dinosaur, I mean, compared to a lot of others. Yeah, but you seem to have uh, accomplished some really cool things on your website recently. Uh, tell us about the major financial goal that you just achieved. Yeah, this is huge. So uh, my husband and I set a goal to pay off our house and we used the earnings from my blog to do that. So basically everything I earned went into that, you know, to paying down the mortgage. And um, in the last year and a half, I've kind of had an explosion on my website and things have gone really well. And so instead of paying it off in four years, like we planned, we paid it off in a year and a half. And so, so exciting. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. <laughs> it's that's still feels really real. Cool. It's only, it's been less than a month. So I'm like, to say that out loud, I'm like, oh gosh. Sounds unreal, yeah. That that money that went into the mortgage payment is surely gonna go into something more fun in the future. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so take us back to the very beginning. How did your website get started in, in the early days? Was it a quick win or did it take a long time before you saw progress? Uh, I decided to cook every single day in the crock pot for a year and post the recipes that I did each day. And so um, that was kind of fun because it held me accountable to my readers, so it made me do it every single day. Even if my readers were like <laughs> five people, or you know, all the uh -huh. friends that I did. You know, it grew though a little bit at a time, um, just because I did get some like news coverage and things because it was kind of like a fun little, you know, thing that people thought was kind of interesting. And so that kind of uh, grabbed people's attention. Yeah, there was something to follow. Right. It wasn't just like, I'm posting a new recipe today, you know, okay. You know, it was more like a journey to follow. So that, that kind of helps get an audience. And then, and then once you, once I really, you know, it was such a niche audience that someone is specifically looking for easy family friendly crock pot recipes, you know, whereas some other food blogs might be a little bit more broad. So that kind of helps get an audience built. So early on, the two things that you think helped you the most were one, you were doing something very different. Uh, yeah. You were, you know, doing this yourself. You were uh, actually cooking every day for a year in a crock pot. Um, and then the second was that most uh, recipe blogs are just recipes, any kind of recipes. And you had some kind of niche to tie all the content together. And I think to give you a domain authority for Google, just that they could recognize, hey, this is all about crock pots. Yeah, I'm confident yeah. that it was the right content. It's been a long time since then. Give us an idea of where your website is today. If you can give us any numbers of what kind of traffic or income it brings in. Yeah, so it started out, I remember you know, looking at my stats when I started and thinking, wow, 100 people came to my website today. That's awesome, you know? And then I built it and it kind of leveled off. I got to a point where it was about 300,000 page views a month, which I thought, okay, 10,000 a day, that's good. And it just leveled off there. And then in the last year and a half, I've introduced um, pressure cooker, like instant pot stuff into the website. And it's just gone crazy. Um, now I have, uh, last month I had, I think 1.75 million page views. Woo! So that is a lot yeah. of page views. <laughs> yeah, it's increased a lot. It's gone. It's gone up. So, so that's really nice. And and in the winter months, it seems to be you know more popular. And then in the summer months, it, it it's not so much. But um, I still I still get anywhere from 750 to, you know, two million page views a month. So that's really exciting and amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. So you yeah. said that the traffic has really, really spiked over the last year and a half or two years. Um, and do you think that's because, I mean, most of your old content was, uh, you know, slow cooker and now instant pots are, are really the big thing. Um, yeah. it, do you think it's, it's riding that trend or that you're, you know, a lot of people are searching for it for that? Or, do you, or did you change something in your content that just more people are coming to everything? No, I think it's definitely people are getting this new appliance. They're not sure how to use it, so they're searching online. A lot of my 
um, hits come from Google and from Pinterest. And so people are just, you know, typing in instant pot chicken recipe or instant pot, you know, how do I do this in the instant pot? So that's a lot of the traffic is just these people that I don't know, you know, they're, they haven't been part of my audience, but now they are. And I'm trying to capture them somehow with my content, but yeah, it's been really great. And once people learn how to use the instant pot, maybe they won't need my website as much and maybe I'll have to transition to something new or different, but um, for right now it's working really well. Yeah, there's always a new trend to follow. <laughs> there's always the next thing. <laughs> um, so what's your posting schedule like today in terms of new content? Yeah, this year I really, really tried to post a lot because I was trying to achieve the goal of paying off our house. So I just said, I'm gonna just do my best, put my head down on blog, you know, get new content out. My kids are both at school um, all day. And so I'm really home you know, I have a lot of, you know, six hours a day that I can work on my blog if I want to. So I decided to post pretty much Monday through Friday, new content. So it's a lot, but, um, and maybe it's not always Monday through Friday, but it's at least four days a week. If I were to start a recipe blog, I mean, I could give a recipe for popcorn, toast, cereal <laughs> and then I'd be out that'd be all I could do how in the world do you think of all the new content ideas I mean so many recipes you can't give yourself all the credit because really what you've done is what I do at least is I take inspiration from other people I take inspiration from what I ate as a you know my mom's recipes in our family cookbook and I change them into instant pot recipes so if you have a great soup recipe that you love to make on and it's a stove top thing well, all you have to do is change a few things and make it into an instant pot recipe, you know, and, and so that's what I do a lot of is I look for inspiration other places, um, you know, in cookbooks, on, on the internet, to other people, and then um, take that and make it into a slow cooker and instant pot recipe. So how much of your content is just a pure recipe and how much of it is, you know, tips for working with a slow cooker or things like that, things that aren't directly a recipe? Usually for let's say I post five new things a week, four out of the five are recipes, and then one is usually an article of some sort, tips, tricks, a roundup, something like that, yeah. With a recipe, I mean, you can post the recipe and maybe this is 100 words, but that's probably not gonna rank real, real well on Google. What are you doing with your recipe posts to help them to rank? What kind of other content are you putting in there? Um, I try to really use, um, I try to be really useful to people and that includes you know telling them where they can find the ingredient that I used and 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 I try to say and here's the tool that I use to make that and here's the affiliate link that you can click on and I um, a lot of times I'll link over to other content that they might be interested in as well I'll say hey if you really like this recipe you're gonna love these ones as well um, but yeah it, it sometimes it's a little bit difficult to to, to make it long enough and sometimes I, I do have a hard time but um, when I keep in mind that it's a, a beginner and they don't know a lot then I just you know uh, I can I can just talk to them in a way that they'll uh, you know they'll, they want on the information they can get so maybe it's not maybe it's maybe it's easy for me to do this recipe but it's probably not for them so I try to make it you know if they want to skip that content they can but if they need to know all that information Here's the information and you can go there, you know, to find out how to cook this recipe. So how does yeah. the website make money? I mean, a breakdown of ads versus affiliate or? I'd say 90% of my income this year has been ads. I work through AdThrive um, and they put the ads on my website. And um, yeah, that's how I make a lot of my money is through ads. And that's really easy and for me. And then I do affiliate stuff with Amazon. Um, and then a few sponsor posts here and there and maybe writing for another website every now and then, but really mostly it's ads. So tell me about promotion and the traffic. Can you give me an idea of what percent of your traffic comes from Google versus Pinterest or are there any other traffic sources? I'd say, okay, let's say I had 30,000 people visit my website yesterday. I'd say 10,000 are from Google, 10,000 are for Pinterest. And then the rest is from my, my email list and Facebook and then random other like direct traffic and things like that. But yeah, mostly Google and Pinterest are number one. And then I have a chunk that comes every day from this email list that I've tried to build up over the last few years. So are you emailing out each new post? 
I am um, every day I manually do it. I, you know, I click publish and then I just put a little personalized thing into the email about why I like the recipe and then they click to get the recipe on the website. And if they don't like it, they just delete the email. But a lot of times they'll be interested and click in. So are you still getting a good open rate? I mean, it seems like that would be quite a few emails, but the open rates are okay. Yeah, I wonder what a good open rate is. Do you, <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Like what is considered a good open rate? 20% is pretty I, normal, I would say. Okay. okay. And I say I probably have about 20% up open it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that seems to be pretty common, I think, for most sites. Yeah. Tell me about your Pinterest strategy. Pinterest is driving a lot of traffic to your website. How do you go about maximizing that? Yeah. I just, well, I pin every new thing that I do and I use Tailwind. Have you heard of that? It's a, yeah. okay. Yeah. It's a scheduling, um, it's pretty inexpensive but it's a scheduling thing where you schedule all your pins. I'm on a few really good group boards and um, I've you know, built up my Pinterest audience. I have, I think I have like 91,000 followers or something like that. But, but then yeah, working with these other bloggers that have you know, five times that really helps too because then whenever you pin to their board, that kind of spreads the word. I also participate in a Facebook group where we drop a pin every day and then everybody in that thread has to repin your pin and you repin everybody else's. So that's, nice for the new posts that don't have any traction yet and immediately gets them going. So I suggest something like that. Well, thanks for taking the time to come on the Income School uh, YouTube channel. It's yeah. really inspiring to hear your story. Yeah, it's, it's, so, it's so amazing what we can do in the world that we live in, where we can virtually, I mean, we can work home at home and make money. And it's just such a good time to be alive. For, for these kind of jobs. So it's been it's been really fun. I'm very, very grateful for for what it's done for me and my family.